Hello there! If you have come to this channel because you need some basic kick in the butt with Hyperland, I think you are in the right place because I have done uh, basic research and basic installation for myself on this laptop and I'm going to share it with you now. Okay, so first things first, let me introduce you to the laptop that we are working on. There we go. We are using uh, the T480 uh, ThinkPad with 8th gen Intel CPU. Basically, that's uh, all that we need to know. Okay, I have made a small collection of uh, packages that I have installed on my Arch Linux. Uh, and these are the ones that you're probably going to need. So take notes of these and I'm going to link them below this video for your copy pasting pleasure. So one of the things that you are definitely going to need to install is Hyperland package. And I believe that this package will pull the other ones uh, that it needs to uh, function. But if it does not, uh, make sure to check uh, if you have installed other packages uh, that are needed. Um, the other packages you are going to need along the ride in case you decide to install uh, all this extra stuff and I'm going to guide you through this uh, a little bit later. So uh, first things first, let's go to the, let, let's pretend that we have already installed SDDM and that you have started this service and now we are going to switch to the SDDM login screen. And the first time you log in, this is going to happen. We're going to log in and you are going to get this black screen with a yellow message saying that you are using the auto-generated config. You're probably uh, unable to read this uh, at this resolution, but it's basically saying that you're um, having uh, an auto-generated configuration file and you should press uh, your super button plus Q uh, to start Kitty, which is precisely what you're going to do. Uh, and Kitty is the default uh, terminal in uh, Hyperland and you should install it prior. Uh, if you're not going to use it and if you prefer some other terminal, uh, feel free to install the other one, uh, but you're going to have to uh, manually uh, adjust the config file from the text console for the first time in order to get the um, super Q uh, shortcut to call your terminal. And this is how we are going to do that. Okay, let's use Nano for now. Okay, so this is our configuration file. So the first thing uh, I have did here already is that I have uh, commented the monitor section because I needed to mirror uh, my internal screen to the one that you are seeing, the one that I'm actually recording via the capture card on my second PC. And this is basically the only uh, change that I have uh, done so far. And if we go to the end of the file, we will see how I did that. So there is a monitor. Actually, let's let's zoom in a little bit. Let's change to 1.5. Okay, there we go. Uh, so what I did here, I, I have um, set the scaling from 100% to 150%. And I have did this for both of my monitors. So a EDP-1 uh, is my internal one from my laptop. And the second one, which is not marked here, uh, is also uh, 1.5, meaning 150%, uh, and this one is mirroring the first one. And the reason why it doesn't have a name here is because um, this is how you catch any monitor, uh, basically any monitor that you plug in. So this line here is actually saying um, how it's... Um, uh, this line is actually using uh, the default configuration for any monitor that you're going to plug in. But the reason why I have uh, set this resolution here is because I wanted to be sure that I'm uh, grabbing the correct one with my capture card. So what you're going to do with your uh, resolution, if you have uh, a laptop like I do, uh, you're going to set 
the correct values for your primary monitor on your laptop and the second one that you might be plugging in uh, later you can just keep uh, like out in like this in automatic mode right uh, and if you know which one are you plugging in then you will um, basically need to know uh, its name and uh, set your configuration accordingly so in order to get rid of the message uh, on the top of the screen you just need to comment out the auto generated line save and it will be gone and in order for me to show you uh, my configuration let me just skip a little bit to the to the end and then i'm going to explain everything Okay, we are back at the 100% scaling. Let me just fix that for a moment. 1.5 here, 1.5 here, and we are back at 150. Okay, let me just guide you through this configuration for a second. Okay, you have seen the monitor's configuration name, resolution, frame rate. This is the position. You should go to this URL and read about the configuration. It's pretty straightforward and easy. Documentation is perfect. Uh, and this is how you set up where your next monitor is going to sit to the right, to the left, uh, above, below. Will it go a little bit um, higher than the middle or a little bit lower? Uh, you can do lots of uh, manual configuration here. Uh, this is some basic um, variables. Uh, so for the terminal, uh, I'm still using Kitty as uh, default. Uh, for the file manager, I'm using Dolphin. Uh, for the menu, uh, I am using, let me just show you, uh, this is the menu. Uh, text editor, I'm using Emacs client. Uh, and in auto start, I am running my variable terminal once. Uh, I'm uh, starting NM applet. This was here actually by default. I just left it here. I'm running Waybar, which is not started right now because uh, I have uh, loaded this configuration uh, live. I'm going to show you Waybar later. Uh, Hyper Paper for the wallpaper, which I haven't set up yet, and Firefox. Um, for screen recording, this part I haven't uh, figured out just yet. Uh, what else is cool here for the changing, for the changing, nothing here, nothing here. This is all default. Okay, uh, keyboard. Uh, if you are not from the United States, uh, you are going to have to configure the keyboard layout here. I'm using Croatian and the variant that I'm using is United States. And this is a weird combo. It's basically a, a US keyboard with the Croatian uh, special letters uh, that I can reach via some special keyboard combination. Um, what else is cool here? Um, mouse key bindings. Okay, this this part is this part is fun. So the uh, main mod plus Q. This will execute terminal by by default. Um, Windows and C will kill the active window. Uh, Windows M will uh, exit uh, Hyperland. Uh, Windows E will execute the file manager. manager. In my case, uh, case it's Dolphin. Um, you can toggle uh, window to float with Windows V. Uh, with R, you can execute uh, the menu. Uh, pseudo, I don't even know what this is. Uh, with J, you can split the window. Uh, and with X, uh, you can execute the uh, text editor because this is how I set it up. Uh, there are some other cool keys that you're going to want to learn uh, with uh, moving the focus up right, left and down. Uh, so you don't need to use the mouse too much. Uh, this is for switching uh, workspaces, uh, windows plus uh, any number from one to zero or 10 if you want. And um, this is how you switch between workspaces and move the applications from one workspace to another. I'm going to show you that uh, in a moment when I will have uh, multiple windows open. Uh, this, is, um, this is what I was saying. You need to press the shift plus mod 
uh, which is a uh, Windows button and the number to move the application to the second or third whatever uh, workspace. Um, this is a little bit advanced and you're going to uh, you, uh, read through this by yourself. These are all uh, m uh, basically uh, default settings. Uh, but what I have missed a lot on my laptop and these are the uh, multimedia case. So you will need uh, a way to find out which uh, exact name is the button on your um, multimedia keyboard on your laptop but this is ThinkPad and I think most of these uh, volume and uh, brightness keys are basically the same so it should be the same on your laptop and this is how I set it up. So this is the button called raise volume so basically volume plus and this is executing uh, a command that is using the default uh, audio driver and setting the volume to plus five percent and when i press the minus uh, button is going down for the five percent uh, it will also go above the 100 percent because it's set uh, to go to the overdrive uh, there is also the mute button uh, the microphone mute uh, button there is a brightness i have set it for uh, steps of the 10 percent because i don't need a more granular granular uh, than that uh, and for the favorites button, I just uh, set it to uh, echo OK into the uh, console because I was testing if it works, but I haven't found a real uh, use for this button just yet. I have some other keys which are still unused, but uh, basically I'm not uh, using them yet. This is uh, my attempt to try to do the... Um, uh, screenshot uh, with uh, this command but I haven't set it up fully just yet basically uh, you can use the print uh, command to um, capture the button and then whatever command you want uh, this is pretty much all and let me just kill the um, let, let's just exit this file let's call waybar waybar Okay, so the first time that you start Waybar, uh, you will get some modules up there, uh, but some of them will not function. And this is where you're going to go back to the beginning of this video, because there I have showed you some other packages that you're going to need to install in order to populate these default modules of the Waybar uh, above. But basically what you want to do um, the first time, you want to start Waybar from your... Uh, terminal because in that case it will show you a lot of errors and from these errors you will figure out which packages are missing and basically what the default on Waybar is um, the exit button uh, there is a clock with calendar uh, there is a battery that is uh, showing uh, the the default battery there is the um, the percentage of the brightness of the screen this is going to change when you push the buttons let me just reach for these buttons okay see i'm just uh, uh, scrolling through my brightness with my uh, thinkpad uh, multimedia keys uh, this is your temperature of the cpu uh, some statistics from your uh, hardware uh, this button is toggling uh, the performance profile now now it's on performance mode and now it's power saving this is the balance mode and again on the performance mode. Uh, this is the um, th this module is showing your current IP address and connection to the um, uh, your your network. This is your current volume. If you click it, you will get the uh, pivot control or whatever it's called. Let me just close it with Windows C. Um, this is something uh, that I have uh, pulled from the manual on the Arch Linux um, uh, hyper, Hyperland configuration. Basically, when you click this, it's calling for the Pac-Man and it's executing this every now and then to tell you how many new packages are waiting for you. And when you click it, it will ask for your uh, password and it will just do uh, the system upgrade. We can do that right now just to make it look a little bit cooler. Um, this, uh, this button 
I actually forgot what this does. Uh, basically, this is uh, telling you which window you are currently having focused. Uh, and my uh, upgrade is complete. Let me just exit this for a second and now we are back here and I'm going to... Let me just um, exit this whole session uh, with Windows M. We're going to go back to SDDM and now let's log into my uh, new configuration from scratch. There we go. This is now going to load my configuration plus uh, my waybar and it, it's, 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 just, it's just loading my stuff, right? So the way I have configured it, I have running uh, Firefox immediately and uh, the terminal runs immediately. So if you go, if you move the focus with your mouse to any of these windows, you can press uh, shift and windows and number two and this is how you move the window to the second um, workspace right and we are now in the second workspace if you press windows one we are back to the first one if you move your mouse to the right side of the screen and press windows q it will spawn another uh, terminal if you move, move your mouse here and press windows q it will spawn another one and another one and another one and basically you can have as many as you want if you need a different size of the window any window that you have uh, then you would need to press uh, the Windows button and both of your mouse buttons and this is how you resize stuff on the fly, right? So you can get basically whichever dimension of the window you need. Um, well, I, I kind of think that we are finished here, right? Uh, this is one of the modules uh, that we have installed through the um, the list of the packages that I have had in the beginning. This is something that you're probably going to need on your laptop in order to connect to uh, your Wi-Fi network. If you're not using Wi-Fi, then you might not need this module and you can just um, leave your um, wired network card to use DHCP uh, client uh, mode and you, you're going to be just fine with that. Okay, um, I kind of tried to, uh, you know, compress this video uh, as much as I could to things that I considered important because uh, in the beginning I did not really understand the connection between Hyperland and Waybar and but basically this is just their preferred um, addition to to the user experience, right? You will want to have some indicator of what's going on in your, in your uh, desktop session. So you can use Waybar, you can use uh, Sway, you can use uh, whatever you want. You, you you don't need to use any anything um, except your Windows, right? But uh, this this is kind of practic practical. And what you saw in the in the top, uh, this was the default skin of the Waybar. It's very skinnable. Uh, you can check on the Discord of Hyperland. There is a um, channel called, I forgot the name, but it's kind of a show off channel. And this is where people are dropping the, basically the looks of their Hyperland configuration. And they are providing all the dot files for their configuration. But which we, what you want to do the first time, you don't want to copy uh, anyone's configuration. This is a mistake that I have made the first time I tried Hyperland. I just kind of logged in and I got freaked out with the yellow bar and zero configuration, nothing, nothing on my screen, right? Just a terminal. Uh, and I went directly for someone else's configuration and it was um, it was a really rich configuration which required uh, our packages and some stuff have uh, automatically compiled uh, and it required uh, even root access and after I did, it, did that I wasn't even sure uh, in which state my system is uh, so um, I kind of cleaned it up everything reinstalled everything and just went from from the scratch on my own and did all the research but basically this is what you should be doing i mean i mean hyperland is not really um a, a window manager for beginners it's kind of for advanced users but it doesn't have to be because if you just start slow and go you know uh, one step at a time i think everyone can get a good value from uh, this window manager, right? So 
I hoped uh, I hope I have helped you with this video and if you got stuck with anything that I have explained so far feel free to drop a comment down below I will do my best uh, to to answer it uh, and I'm going to see you in the next video thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching Thank you.